Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Cube Mix Plus. This is a Windows tablet with an optional keyboard base that I've got here. And uh, what's interesting about this one is that although it looks like a lot of the other cheap tablets that we typically look at here on the channel, uh, this one is powered by a Core M3 KB Lake processor. So it is a lot faster uh, than a $200 computer you might be looking at, but it's also twice as much. It costs about $400 or so, but uh, really good performance out of this thing. Uh, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from GearBest.com. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. Now, I do want to give you a warning about these Chinese tablets. As you'll see, it has Chinese on here right when you first boot it up. Uh, this is going to be something that you're going to have a hard time finding service for if something were to go wrong. Now, GearBest, of course, will probably help you out in the uh, early stages of your ownership of it. But uh, after that, you're kind of on your own. So I always like to give a, a warning up front that you should really uh, buy and use these at your own risk. Keep good backups and know that you may not always get the best support if something were to go wrong. Sometimes there's a price to be paid by paying the lowest price as uh, definitely is the case here and many other products that I review like this one. I just like to get those things out up front. Another thing to note on this is that it has a, a Chinese version of Windows installed that uh, then has the English language pack installed over it. So it's activated, but uh, you are getting a computer that's already been installed with an administrator account with no password. So who knows what else they put on there. So what I usually do is I pull the drivers off with a utility called Double Driver. I might do a video on this separately just so you can see what I do uh, when I get these things in. I then install the US version of Windows. Even though it's not activated, it's going to work at least for the purposes of this review. You can always buy a key later. And then I use Double Driver to put those drivers back on because I'm always uh, very mindful of uh, trying to keep my computers as secure, I guess, as possible. I mean, there always could be something in those drivers that might be insecure, but I just like to know that I have an account on my machine that I uh, installed versus one that came from the factory. So just a couple of warnings there that always uh, come into play with these devices and things you should be thinking about before you buy. All right, so now that the warnings are out of the way, let's take a look at the hardware. We've got a KB Lake Core M3 processor from Intel. This is the latest and greatest, a uh, seventh generation chip. And what this one brings to the mix is better graphics performance and uh, some improvements in video playback. You'll see that when we look at gaming and Kodi a little later in the review. Pretty substantial improvements over the prior generation, actually. Uh, you've got four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and they configured this in dual channel configuration, which gives you the better performance than uh, many of the other cheap computers we look at which use a single channel of memory and you'll see uh, some effects of that when we look at some of the gaming in a little bit. 128 gigabyte SSD, you've got a 10.6 inch 1080p IPS touch display. It's a little on the blue, colder side of things, but it doesn't look too bad. I've got it on battery right now, so it's a little dimmer than it usually is, but it uh, looks pretty nice. Uh, they did put their own uh, screen protector on, which you can take off. I'm leaving it on here just in case the next person who owns this might uh, want to leave it there. But what will happen is that screen protector scratches up uh, pretty easily, especially if you use a pen with it because it has uh, Wacom tablet capabilities built in. We'll explore that in the review also. So you do have some uh, pretty decent functionality on this little device for the price. Now the keyboard here is a separate item. So what you get for the $400 or so is the tablet portion here by itself. Uh, there isn't much to look at on here. You got a pogo plug on the bottom for connecting it to that keyboard base. Uh, the keyboard's about a $50 add-on. Uh, ports are rather interesting on this one. So you do have your headphone microphone jack. You have a uh, SD card, a micro SD card slot over here for augmenting the onboard storage. Again, 128 gigabyte SSD. You've got a fully functional, full service USB type C port. This will do power, data, and uh, HDMI output. So you can get uh, your video out if you've got a, a compatible dongle there. And it works very well for that. It works up to 4K as I tested on my TV over there earlier. And then what's interesting is they have a regular USB 3 port here, but it's the micro USB 3 connector, uh, the one you might see on the bottom of your or the back of your hard drive. So you plug that in there and they give you a adapter cable here if you want to connect a regular larger USB device up to it. It's kind of odd that they did that. You would think it'd be easier to have this two USB type C ports if you need a dongle anyhow, but uh, that's what they decided to do. And then there's a power adapter port here. So you can charge it either through the power adapter that comes with it, or you can charge it via USB type C. It'll support some of the faster charging uh, through that Type-C port also, so you do have some uh, flexibility on that. Uh, battery life I found to be pretty good actually, around five and a half, six, seven hours, somewhere in that range, depending on what you're doing. I think if you're web browsing and doing word processing, you'll probably get uh, seven hours or so out of it, so not too bad on that front. Uh, not much else to look at on the tablet portion here. There's a 
speakers on the uh, right hand side. You've got your power switch over there. Uh, the keyboard dock is uh, actually very similar to the old Asus T100 that I reviewed a while ago. It reminds me a lot of it, including all of its faults. So you have uh, very tiny little keys here, which are kind of hard to type on. The trackpad is okay, but uh, very hard to work with. I had a really hard time uh, moving files around in the Explorer and whatnot. So I'm not crazy about how all of it works, but it's good enough in a pinch, I suppose, if you just want the uh, mi most minimal uh, means of travel with you. Uh, you've got a couple of USB ports on the dock also. So you've got two more USB 2.0 ports on here, uh, and it, then it connects uh, magnetically back to the uh, main device here, and you can fold it up and take it with you. It will uh, recognize when you take it out of the keyboard and go into tablet mode if you want. So it does all the things you would expect a uh, typical Windows 10 device to do. Now with the keyboard attached, it does get a little heavy, about three pounds, seven ounces. That's uh, 1.6 kilograms. Uh, when you just have the tablet by itself, it is one pound, nine ounces or 708 grams. You also have, of course, your uh, webcam on the front and another camera on the back. They're nothing spectacular, but they're there if you want to make a quick phone call. Just don't expect uh, good quality out of them. So that is the overall hardware. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. All right, so let's kick things off with some web browsing. We'll go over to my YouTube channel and pull up my 1080p 60 frames per second drone review that we always look at here. And you can see uh, things were very responsive, snapped right up when I uh, clicked on the shortcut link. That's because you've got that faster processor. You also have a wireless AC built in, so you will get a decent wireless performance out of it as well. Uh, the Stats for Nerds here is reporting no drop frames as we're playing back video. So this should be fine for Netflix and for other uh, streaming services also. So I think you'll have a good experience there. Uh, we'll also pull up the NASA website and see how fast other uh, very multimedia rich sites render in. And you can see it comes up very quickly. This is actually what they have posted today on their website. That's supposed to be there. It's not some error. I'll click on another article here so you can get a feel for how fast everything renders in. But it's really quick, actually. I'm really quite pleased with the performance out of it. And again, it's funny because I've used computers that feel physically very similar to this one that are a lot slower. That, this one really surprised me when I first booted it up. I was like, what is in this thing again? And I uh, then looked up the specs. Usually what happens is they contact me and there's about a two week delay between the time that I hear about it and when it shows up. And I thought I was getting another uh, Atom based device here, but certainly not. This is a lot quicker with that uh, Core M3 chip. So very, very uh, good performance there. And on the Octane benchmark test running in Google Chrome, we got a score of 23,095, which actually edges out slightly the Dell XPS 13 from about two or three years ago that we looked at here on the channel. Now that Dell was running with the fifth generation Intel chipset, uh, the higher powered i5 version. Uh, this one is the seventh generation Core M version, and it gives you an idea as to uh, as time goes on, designs get more efficient and they can deliver more performance with less power. So that's what you get uh, out of these current generation Core M chips, and this one performs pretty nicely as a result. And that means a lot of real world tasks like word processing here with Microsoft Word will perform very nicely. So we've got a, a pretty involved template here with a lot of pictures and graphics and whatnot. And you can see how quickly everything renders in. You can very easily make changes to it. There's no lag or delay. It just responds to what you're doing. And again, that's what uh, these, these uh, Core M chips do a little bit better than some of the other low powered Intel chips you can choose from on cheaper devices. And one of the biggest performance gains I've seen on this new seventh generation Intel architecture, especially on these low powered devices, devices is graphics performance. And I've got uh, Rocket League running here, a game that doesn't typically run on these Core M processors very well. Uh, right now it's running at almost 60 frames per second with all the settings turned down at 1080 uh, with this Core M3 chip. Now, a lot of times it's dipping down into uh, the mid 40s or so, but uh, generally 40 or 45 frames per second or better is about the average. And sometimes it creeps up to uh, close to 60, depending on what's going on in the game. So pretty good performance here uh, because of some of the improvements they've made in the uh, GPU that is built into these Intel chips. So really good performance on this game. Let's see if it can run Grand Theft Auto 5. Now, Grand Theft Auto 5 does run on this machine. It just doesn't run all that well. So I'm getting anywhere from 15 to 25 frames per second, give or take. Uh, that's with all the settings at their lowest possible settings and at 800 by 600 resolution. And one of the things you should know about these little devices with fanless chips is that the uh, hotter they get, the slower they run because the chips actually slow themselves down so they don't overheat. And I ran some benchmarks to test that. And the 3D Mark uh, stress test reported that we will see some thermal throttling 
uh, as things get hot. So this is definitely not going to be a triple A gaming device, but probably suitable for some of the lower powered games that you might find on the Steam store, some casual stuff, some indie titles. Uh, those should do okay, but uh, stuff like Grand Theft Auto 5 here should probably be left for your uh, gaming computer. I also ran the 3D Mark CloudGate test to get a better idea as to how it stacks up with other computers, and we got a score of 4,824 on that test. And uh, take a look at the Mi Air 12, which is running with the same class of processor from the prior generation, and look at the graphical jump here. We're getting about 30 frames per second on the first graphics test there, only about 18.98 or 19 frames per second on uh, the prior generation. So you can see there's a real jump in graphical performance, and even the CPU performs a little better on the physics test. They've made some pretty big gains here on these Core M chips in this generation, but heat is still your enemy, and it will still uh, impact performance as you're running these things over long periods of time. All right, let's take a look now and see how the pen works with the device here. Now, this is a Wacom compatible device, meaning any uh, Wacom pen should work with it. The driver is called Wacom Feel because I had to go out and find it to get it working after I reinstalled Windows on it. My double driver didn't pick that one up. Uh, so look for the Wacom Feel driver and you'll be good to go. I'm using a little app here called Speedy Painter just to see how all of this works here. And it does detect a pressure actually, which is pretty good. So it has some of those features that you would expect from a Wacom device and uh, you can do some basic drawing on here. It doesn't do as well with wrist detection though. So sometimes it's pretty good. Other times you can see here it's kind of messing up. So uh, what I found works is to get the pen down on the surface first and then uh, put your wrist down but it's not perfect here as you can see so sometimes it works other times it doesn't it's not going to be as good as a Microsoft surface or something that's more uh, expensive and designed for this kind of activity but uh, you do get pen functionality that's slightly better than what you might see on other cheap devices but I was impressed with its performance with high-end video formats. So we have uh, Kodi running here. We're going to run a 140 megabits per second 10-bit HEVC file. This is, is something that would choke a prior generation device here, and it comes up without issue. This is the Jellyfish test video that I'll put a link to down below in the video description. They've got a whole bunch of uh, different versions of this, but this file is 4K, 10-bit, 140 megabits per second, and it's playing back perfectly. No drop frames, no skip frames, and it looks great. And again, this is something you probably couldn't get to play on the prior generation chip, but these KB Lake processors are, are just optimized uh, for this kind of video playback. So really good stuff there. Uh, you can also play things like traditional 1080p Blu-ray files here without issue either. So uh, really good video playback performance, especially if you are bringing your own media with you. Uh, so I think you'll enjoy that quite a bit. The speakers are on the side here aren't great. Uh, so you probably want to plug in a pair of headphones or something, but uh, I was very pleased to see the multimedia performance was as good as it was, especially considering the price point. So all in, I am very pleased with how well this performed for the price. In fact, when I took it out of the box, it felt like every every uh, cheap Windows tablet I've used over the last couple of years. And then I turned it on and started playing with it. And I said, wow, this thing's actually pretty good. The display is nice, uh, 1080p IPS. It looks nicer in person than it does on your screen right now, just given all the uh, difficulties in shooting the screen. Uh, the performance is excellent. There are a few compromises here. It's great for doing work, really great for media consumption, as you saw, uh, passable for gaming. You got the USB Type-C port, so you could dock it with a docking station and use it as a secondary desktop, even if you wanted to do that. Uh, so I think it's actually going to do quite well as a second computing device and it won't cost you all that much money, which is a good thing because if anything ever goes wrong with it six or eight months down the road, you might be <laughs> stuck with it. But um, all in though, I think it might be worth taking the risk uh, provided you spend a little time when you get it to uh, get your own version of Windows installed on it uh, versus the one that comes with it. Just for security purposes, I like to just know what I'm putting on my computer here. But uh, beyond that, I think if you are looking for a, a decent little cheap Windows device, with performance, this one certainly delivers. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.